Bright Central Road. Here we come. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> We've had some things come out. What are you thinking about that? Um, that it's not an omen. <laughs> that it's probably just a weird, freaky spot of dark cloud that's going to move on and be on its merry way very shortly. Good. Positive thinking. Good, good, good. So we're in Laverton, just on the edge of the central road. It's not supposed to be any rain. See how we go. See how we go. Sure, it'll be fine. Should be fine. What's the worst that could happen? Um, oh, also, if you're in Laverton, how should I say this? We were going to stay at a rest stop. We thought we'd just drive into town. And then I decided we'd stay at the caravan park anyway because we need to go to the information. We got to the caravan park and... Did you see that? The lightning. The lightning. It's about four or five strikes now. <laughs> um, and we got to the caravan park and there's a pin pad and a gate that's locked across the driveway all the time. So it's probably not a good idea to just camp randomly on the side of the road at Laverton. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it could be worse. It could have um, barbed wire along the fence. And the fence is not a bit... I mean, yeah. I, I could step over that. Yeah, the fence is not high. Almost. Alrighty, so I just, um, I didn't feel when I, I should have, but as you can see, I'm all sort of dusty and a bit dirty. The checks that I've done, I've been doing a few every day. The ones that I did today were mainly on the drawbar. I just wanted to make sure that any cabling was um, still zip tied to the frame or not hanging down so i just double checked and i did find a couple that i had to um zip up the other thing was i wanted to put a a cam buckle strap just to pull tight like a belt around the gas bottles just to sort of eliminate as much major rattling as possible they weren't really restrained too well the actual bottle holders they're a little bit too big i think they're for a nine kilo and they only do 8.5s well that's what i've got at the moment i ratchet them up nice and tight i got on under the, the the caravan as you can see from the dust and just wanted to inspect for any sort of rock damage that we may have gotten already just wanted to have a look so the things i was looking for is potential holes cracks dents damage cr crack pipes loose fittings loose stone guards for the for the water tanks um it, yeah that's pretty much all all i did on the van i did a walk around wanted to make sure that everything was nice and tight uh, i have checked the wheel studs uh recently i like to check before and just after I've started to make sure that it's 100% happy days. We put up in Leverton, fully expecting to start the Great Central Road tomorrow. tomorrow. 
we'll head towards Warburton tomorrow uh, from Warburton and it's virtually dirt apparently so we're looking at the sky at the moment uh, with a bit of like I don't know I don't know <laughs> it's, it's trying real hard to rain at the moment storm's basically on top of us right now I'll spin you around in a second and show you the, the lightning but hopefully it doesn't get too wet and hopefully we can um, I mean, fingers crossed yeah it's raining just across the road here so I want to get drenched in a second let's sort of see it just got <laughs> yeah the winds just changed direction so I'm going to get wet very very shortly I think I just looked at the Windy app and there's a rain uh, feature to search for on the app and it shows you where the rain is as well as the wind. At the moment, I'll give you a look in a second, there's a nice narrow curtain of rain and it's exclusively on the Great Central Road at the moment. So hopefully when we do it, it's uh, not sloppy. Hopefully it's just a little bit wet. Hopefully they don't, it doesn't do anything and we actually get the roads closed. Yeah. So we'll go to the information center tomorrow morning and they give us all the details around road closures and everything. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Everything's good to go. So I'll show you this. You can see the app there, all of this, that blue stuff is directly over the Great Central Road. So that's Warburton right there. We're back down here. Eh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Grant's just got into the information centre and what they say about the roads? So the roads are okay, there, there isn't any sort of warning or anything like that. So but they did however say that on the Northern Territory side that they did have some rain last week and there was quite a lot of mud in sections for travellers, but apart from that, no other warning. So it looks like we're pretty good to go. There wasn't a lot of rain last night too, so that um, storm was just all all um, lightning, all show, pretty much. Oh, yeah. All show, no go. Um, yeah, yeah, hit the road. So, the grant's got a, a map, they've given us a map of it. So, um, sorry, put in a better photo than what's on my lap here, but um, basically, you can dr drive the road all the way from Perth to Cairns if you really want to. Um, we're going from Laverton, from Laverton um, and all the way through to Earl Dunder, and then we'll probably come down the Stewart Highway. So that's our plan at the moment. The, the section that we're traveling through from Laverton to Earl Dunder is passing through um, three different Aboriginal communities but we've needed to apply for two permits, one from the WA side and one on the Northern Territory side. So I will um, drop in some information down below here and I'll put some links in the bio on the permits. And it was quite easy. Just went online, uh, filled out all our details. You filled out the reason for travel is transit, um, submit and Northern Territory, you get the permit back straight away. Western Australia took about 24 hours and we got the permit to travel. I've had a lot of chats about um, for on forums regarding what tyre pressures and stuff. They reckon between 10 and 20 PSI from road, so um, like out of what your road pressure is. 
So, for example, the F truck runs pretty high, like 60 in the front, 80 in the rear. Uh, so I'll probably take about 10, 15 PSI out of both um, and maybe five to 10 PSI out of the caravan and then go from there. That's a starting point. Um, so road conditions change and so should your um, your road, your tire pressures basically. Mm. Um, it's, there, there's no set number that's going to do you for, for every condition. Road conditions change, therefore so should your tire pressures. Okay, we're about to head off. Yep. Great Central Road. Here we come. Let's do it. <laughs> starting it now and um, it'll run out pretty quick I reckon and then we're going to hit the dirt it looks down. fairly abruptly as well so uh, <laughs> and I'll pull over and just knock some air out and then keep going yes yeah, so if we're trying to get to I'm going to like murder all of these words just gonna do a very bad thing to all of them. So, to Carol, to 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 Carol, to Chica, to Carolina. Oh, I'm not like that. Yeah. Um, around there today. It's about 305 k's um, from Labberton, and you know, with the dirt and stopping and taking photos and seeing bits and pieces it's probably going to take us I don't know six hours depending on the road conditions yeah probably closer to six yeah uh, it's 9.30 in the morning so we just hit the, the dirt so that's the black tops just finished over here we're now on dirt for I don't know how many kilometers. Grant is just going to let the tire pressures down and I am um, I'm just going to close our um, this door which is like our water dust door just to keep the dust out of this vent um, and I've got an old towel so I think I might squish that in the top just to try and keep some more of the dust out. So generally speaking we don't really get a huge amount of dust in the caravan. If we do get it in, it just does come through this vent at the bottom of the door, um, or it comes through a window that hasn't latched properly. Other than that, we usually don't get any um, any dust into the caravan. Just putting a bit of towel in just to try and stop um, some of the dust getting inside the caravan. So the bus trackers have this water waiting dust door and it just sort of T-bolts and secures in. And um, the idea is to increase your weighting depth. So the limit is sort of where this line is where my fingers are. And uh, I haven't tried it. I feel like if the water level is above the tires, probably might want to think about it. <laughs> but it's a good little feature. Um, if, it, if the water did come up to above the axles, then um, you'd want to be thinking about it anyway, so. Huh? Are you filming me? I am. Um... 
I'd look, but I can't take my eyes off the road. No, I just thought I could get all the hand movements in. Yes. Alright. Not too bad here, but that there is so soft. Just pulled over, we're gonna have some lunch. Oh, it's getting a bit windy. I'll just take you in the caravan and let's just see if there's any dust in there or if anything's moved or fallen down. Um, to prepare to go on corrugated roads, we don't really put anything different in the caravan. We just, however we set it up, usually we don't have to do anything special generally. So let's just see. Oh, a little bit of dust. Okay, dog food is everywhere. Dog food. We've had some things come out. Oh, and um, our uh, fusion lock. Really fusion broken. lock. Yeah, I think it is broken. Yeah, so this is this has never fallen off before. It's been on there for. 18 months, so it's the first time. Okay. So we have dog food on the floor, and then everything else is the same. Oh, we've got some dust in from from underneath the fridge. Has come in. We um, had a good night in the roadhouse. We don't usually like stay in you know caravan parks and things like that, but on these type of roads, it's really good to support those businesses. So I would say it's important. Yeah, very important. Yeah, um, just to, to keep them going. Five k. Yep. There we go. If, if they're not here and you want to pass this road, unless you've got a, a fuel pot on the back of, of your truck or trailer, you won't make it. Yeah. Uh, it's really important these people stay open, like these businesses stay open. So that's why we try to, if we're in the area and we're on these roads, we try to make, make a point of going to support them. So, 
yeah, it was a really great little camp. I think it was $35 for the night. And got fuel and got some, um, got a souvenir. Yeah, I got a shirt. Got a singlet, a bread, which is nice. And just behind the roadhouse, there's a road out to some caves. There's like a five kilometer away cave and a 15 kilometer away cave. We're just gonna go down to the five kilometer away cave at the moment and go have a look. It is starting to get really hot. So we're just gonna, yeah, see this. I would like to see them all. <laughs> yeah. But one day when we come back. We might see more of them. We'll try and see them all. Hopefully we won't be doing it this late in the year. Yeah, so it's um, 8.30 in the morning. It's 31 degrees at the moment and yeah I'm sure it's only just going to get hotter. I think it's usually the hottest around like two o'clock in the afternoon. So onto the caves. Onto the caves. Okay, we're not 100% sure, but we think we might have found the cave, so we're just gonna go check it out. So it looks like, they don't really look like caves anymore, but they may have been caves at one point until the top collapsed. Which is all the rubble. <laughs> what just happened? I had, a, I had a heart attack. <laughs> so I got out to fly the drone. Bianca wanted aerial footage. This is my fault. So it's her fault. Yeah. And I had these in my, these are the car keys. I had them and the, the van keys, the tunnel boot key, toolbox key. I had it in my pocket and then I got in on passenger side for Bianca to drive while I fly and they popped out of my shorts and they um, were here waiting for me. <laughs> so we got to the cave and um, I had a mild cardiac arrhythmia, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, found them. Yeah. Onward. <laughs> yes, so very fortunate that we were the only ones on the track. Nobody else had come past and driven across the top of them. I hadn't driven across the top of them with the caravan. No, amazing one. <sighs> Ooh, what a relief. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. I feel better now. You can breathe again. I was like this, the whole white track going, and come on, come on, where are you, where are you? <laughs> and actually the seats in the F truck are really good because I didn't want to sit up and lean like that. So I just raised my seat <laughs> electronically so I could see over the, the dash, <laughs> over the bonnet and the dash. You did it the lazy way. I did do it the lazy way.
dummy animal. Oh, I've got to see if I can get a better look at the camel. Did he go away? No, oh, there he is. He's still there. Hopefully he doesn't charge me. Okay, that's close enough. He's looking at me. I don't want him to charge me. Okay, so we just we've just pulled up into the Warburton Roadhouse Caravan Park. You glad? Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. It was actually perfect timing. The wind picked up and it's super gusty at the moment. And <laughs> without a word of a lie, I nearly like got pushed over. Yeah, I nearly got blown over. I just walked into the car and I couldn't Ooh. open the car door. Literally, nearly fell over <laughs> at, at the at the power box. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're gonna, that's us for today. We're not yeah. going to do anything else. <laughs> we're, um, we're, yeah, it's it's windy, but it's really hot still. Yeah, it's 39. And the roads aren't, uh, I don't know, it's just really hilly and the wind, everything's running a bit hotter than I would like it to. It's okay, but I don't like working oh. harder than I have to. Anyway, that's it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Not really any nice B-roll to do in here, is there? Not really. <laughs> They have a special alarm clock here. I'll just show you. They're very uh, pretty alarm clocks. One peacock. Very pretty alarm clock. But it is, it's quite early. We're used to WA time. Um, and then at the Warburton Roadhouse, there's Telstra reception and our phones have changed over to Australian Central Time, which is two hours earlier. So it's 6.30 Australian Central Time, which is 4.30 WA time, which is what we're used to. And the sun's been up for two hours. <laughs> so clearly I've just woken up, uh, but we're gonna pack ourselves up and hit the road.
the road we uh, have left Walburton. That one? Walburton? We hit the road earlier this morning. The road coming out of Walburton is actually is really good. Driving this time of morning where it's nice and early, it's not too hot. The car's running really good. The road is, I would say, very good. I'm sitting on about 80 at the moment. Everything's happy with me doing that, but the temperatures are good, feels good. So we're gonna try and get to Warakuna Roadhouse by what lunchtime, was it? About two hours drive to get there. So whatever time that actually is, I don't know what time <laughs> they're on. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> it's about two hours. And then we are attempting to get to Yulara today. So that's a total of 500 and... I think 520. 520, thereabouts. That's more than what we usually do in a day. But we're sort of thinking, we're looking at wiki camps and the, uh, the maps that we got at Leverton Information Centre. There was all saying there wasn't too much in the way of camps between here and there anyway. So we thought, well, might as well keep going. We also looked at the, the weather and the day that the full day that we had before at Uluru or around to explore is going to be super windy. <laughs> so if we push through today, we might be able to get a day that's not super windy. Yeah, if we see which will be the wind with us. lovely. <laughs> so we'll see where we get to. So far, the road's been pretty good. There's been like one patch that's been quite bad, but apparently we found out that there was a. Oh tanker explosion or something and damaged the road quite badly and they've, they've done a little bit of repair on it but they still need to do a lot of work that bit was um, very rough quite rough which is where the dog food and stuff had fallen over in the van but other than that the road is, is quite good loving loving the scenery and I'm surprised at how green it is it's everything is so, so green, green at the moment. and it's not what I expected yeah. you, you expect this road to just be and for where it is geographically to be like the road, sort of desert with you know white scrub around the place, but no, it's very green. Pleasantly surprised. surprised. There's still lots of flowers out too. Yeah. I'm surprised that we haven't seen very many animals. We saw a camel. We've seen a camel on the side of the road and then we've seen a group of like five or six in the distance. And Grant put the drone up, but I don't think we were able to I think they moved on by the time we put the drone up to find them. I mean, we're only halfway, or just over halfway at the moment. So we've got like 450Ks to go. Uh, maybe we'll see more, hopefully. Fingers crossed.
Yay! How cool is that? A new state. Very cool. Yay! We made it. Northern Territory. Yeah, beautiful. Awesome. We haven't been in here yet. No, we haven't. So, yeah, pretty excited. <laughs> What you been doing? Are you hey. digging? Hey, are you digging? My nose is red. Well, it's better than the other caves we found. Yeah, right. So apparently Lasseter's diary was found in here after he died about 40 k's away. Yeah. Today. It's been a long day. <laughs> uh, but yes, we are going to be camping soon. Very excited. I need a ginger beer. Well, something, uh, I need a gin. I need a triple shot gin. Something a bit stronger? Yeah, no, I need something with a kick. <laughs> we've just um, been driving quite slowly for the last. 60, 80 k's um, just behind a young lady who's, uh, what was it? There's a cross member on a yeah. rear axle yeah, and out arm or something. So the cross member on the rear axle, like we came up behind it, we noticed it was dragging along the ground behind her, so stopped her and Grant's wrench and strapped it up and we're just driving behind her to make sure she can get into the caravan park. Safe. So far my bush mechanics. My actual mechanics are rubbish. My bush mechanics are pretty A class, eh? <laughs> Could I say? Because it's so far it's it's holding up pretty good, so uh, I mean just quietly. Just quietly. Tickets going cheap. <laughs> Guess where we are? We're here, finally. We're here, we made it. Made it. Only, what, I don't know, how many kilometres? Uh, where from? From Laverton to here? It was like 1300 k's or something yeah. like that, I think. Well, there's... Um, and the last half was... <laughs> Actually, well, from, from Warburton it wasn't too bad, but then... Um, but for, the part from Laverton was ordinary and then the last little bit coming in towards um, Yavara was yeah from, the, from the border was was not great bit ordinary as well but yeah great drive definitely uh, recommended the Great Central definitely yeah if you get a chance to do the, the GCR definitely give that a go because the the scenery particularly when you get towards the border the NT border 
the landscape changes. You get these big rolling bluffs sticking out of the ground. They're just stunning. Really, really like the country changes. It's just, I don't have words. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. We're so excited we're gonna we're here. So I don't know, that's about it. That's about it. <laughs>